For this video, we're using the Gabby distribution tool to brew coffee with the April Brewing Kit. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. We continue to explore how we can brew better coffee in different ways using our own April Brewer. And for this channel actually, we started to play around with what is called the Gabby drip um, a while back and we're gonna feature that on its own in a later video. But what we've been doing as well is to kind of see, well, how does it work with the April Brewer, right? So the whole idea with the Gabby concept is to have a steady, even flow of water, basically, right? So one of the things that is challenging when it comes to coffee brewing or manual pouring is actually pouring water on the coffee. And arguably, especially in a competition situation or in the store here, for example, when you wanna brew multiple coffees at the same time, you want them to taste the same. And part of that is you being able to actually pour the water onto the coffee in the same way. Now, you obviously have restricted flow rates on kettles and other ways to kind of make this more uniform. But when it comes to the Gabby Brewer, what they've been trying to do is to more or less do a bulletproof version, uh, which generates an even pour every single time. So it's more or less a tiny top funnel that you fill up with water and that has a tiny, tiny little hole in it, which actually regulates then the speed of the water going on uh, the filter underneath, which is basically distributing the water evenly then on your brewer. Now, arguably, this is either used together with Gabby's own brewer, which is a flatbed base, or on a Kalita or on the April brewer in this case, right? So basically what we've done is we pre-wet the filter as one should. Uh, we're putting this on top more or less. Naturally, we're gonna put some coffee in the brewer first. The coffee that we're using is a CM processed, carbonic macerated Ethiopian coffee from a process station called Conga, processed through product origin in Australia. We're using a 12 gram dose, and we're actually using the same grind size as we would on a normal kind of April recipes, and we have plenty of videos of that for reference. Now we're popping this on top. We have a water temperature that sits at 94 degrees Celsius. And basically what we're looking to do is starting our timer, starting our pour. And we're gonna follow a pouring structure that is a bit different from us. So we're basically actually gonna fill up all of the 200 grams of water in one pour directly from the beginning. Here we go. And after that, what's interesting now, right, is that because of the amount of water, both in the top and in the base, you're gonna have a steady slow, a steady controlled flow continuously throughout the whole brew. So the coffee will have the same amount of water going on it at every single part of the brew. Now, the argument here from their side is that you get an increased amount of clarity, you get a cleaner cup, you get a better extracted cup. Now, in our experiments, we can't find that we necessarily are tasting a better extracted coffee. However, if you brew several ones at the same time, it does help with uniformity, right? Now, that being said, there's clearly some things when it comes to coffee brewing and uniformity in that, that is more than just how the water goes on the coffee, right? So in the end, when it comes to taste, we're not picking up that much of a difference. Um, but in terms of workflow, it's interesting, right? Especially in a store like this, if you have multiple baristas brewing, you would have a slightly higher uniformity, at least in the pouring part of it. What we have found uh, as well is that using the same grind size, using the same amount of water, um, even though we're pouring it in one single go, we're actually getting very, very similar brew times as what we've been getting before, right? So we actually have a very steady stream of water, which also really interestingly, we have a much lower average amount of water in the coffee bed, right? So what's happening that is that normally when we do this pour, we would have to almost fill the filter more than half with water. But in this case, 
uh, we actually have a much, much, much thinner bed in terms of how much the water is covering throughout the whole brew, which again is perhaps in helping, helping a bit with the uniformity of the actual brew. Now, what we're looking at here in total brew time is about 250. So we're brewing a tiny bit longer time, uh, but we don't see any negative variables with that. So we kind of recommend to, again, keep the same grind size, keep the pouring structure we showed you here, and then the result that comes out is actually what we think really, really good. So at basically 250, we have all the water gone through the brewer. I'm gonna put that on the side and we can see here what we have is an extremely uniform bed, basically, that clearly shows how high the kind of water level has been as well. Um, and then more or less at three minutes, we have all of that water gone through and the brew is more or less ready. We took a little bit of a break there to do some necessary quality control, uh, basically using a roughometer to measure the TDS and calculate a bit of extraction. What we find here, which is quite interesting, again, factoring in, we have the same dose, we have the same amount of water, we have the same grind size as we normally do with the April Brewer. Now, the strength of the TDS we're getting on this coffee when we brew it and serve it here in the store is about 1.2 up to 1.25. Now, when we did this method here, we're getting a TDS of 1.35 to 1.36 giving us an average extraction of about 21%, give and take based on your different variables that can all kind of differ, right? But that's really interesting. So what we see here is that we're actually extracting more of the same coffee ground the same way using the same ratio. We can also see on the coffee bed that it's extremely uniform, it's a definition of uniform, which is quite interesting because I don't believe that I've seen that before in any kind of normal pouring. And one of the main things here is the fact that the water level stays so low in the filter at all times. Basically, one can argue then that the water has gone more uniformly through the coffee. There is less agitation, which also means less bypass. So the question here, are we looking at a more uniform extraction? Well, maybe we are. The coffee, I think in both ways, with or without, is tasting great. This for sure has a bit more sweetness and we feel that the composition of the taste actually fits together a tiny bit better. Now, keep in mind that this also goes with a higher TDS. So the higher TDS, to some degree, the sweeter the cup um, and the more kind of structured every variable of the cup is, right? So when we brew with lower TDS without the Gabby, we get a wilder, more acidic, more vibrant cup. But that's also because that's our preference. However, really interesting experiment and something that we actually recommend testing when it comes to um, the, using the April Brewer, right? Get yourself a Gabby and see how it actually comes out. We should say also for the sake of the video that there's two different versions of this. There's probably more, but there's a smaller kind of handheld version of it as well, which you could use. The challenge there is that you actually don't have the top part here. So it doesn't regulate the speed of the water flow. It just regulates kind of like the distribution, how the water goes on to the coffee. So we actually recommend to get the full kind of setup. Um, super interesting. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this as always. Have you tried this yourself? Is there something you want to try? Do you have any other ideas when it comes to these kind of distribution tools that are also interesting? We'd love to hear from you guys. As always, we're taking this conversation to our Patreons talking about more in-depth details in terms of how we're using it, how they're using it. We also do monthly Zoom meetings where we discuss all of the videos that were done a bit more in detail. So sign up if you haven't signed up already. With that, we want to say thank you for watching as always and enjoy your day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.